Hey, what's up guys? This is the Samsung Galaxy S9. It's leaked many times over, but now it's finally official and this is it. In this video, I wanted to cover what's new, the most important things, how they compare to the iPhone 10, and which one you should buy based on your needs. So basically just wanna cover the biggest points between these two and how they compare. There was a lot of fluff in the actual events, I will not lie, I was just like, really guys, you're making this sound so much greater than it is because if you look at it, not much has changed. It's pretty much the same design. You can say this was an S8 and I believe you just because of how similar they look. I mean, there's a little design difference on the back, the display looks a little sleeker towards the bottom, but otherwise, aside from the colors, this is the S8 in a slightly altered shell. So anyways, I'm not trying to understate the S9. It's actually quite a capable beast. There's a lot that it can do that the iPhone 10 can't. So let's cover those details and how these phones compare. And I want to preface this by saying I love the iPhone 10, but I will always respect the Samsung Galaxy series for doing more, giving you more functionality, not holding back. Just it's like the pinnacle of technology in a smartphone, in my opinion. And the S9 definitely builds upon that legacy. So let's talk design. The Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus follow closely to the S8. Not much has changed aside from the placement of the fingerprint sensor directly below the cameras. The flash has swapped orientations. Otherwise, mostly the same. The speaker grill on the bottom looks a little bit better, a little bit cooler looking. Uh, but other than that, the design is pretty similar. And when comparing it to the iPhone 10, definitely gonna be a preference thing. They both have vertical cameras like on the S9 Plus. Uh, both are pretty compact, but the iPhone 10, believe it or not, is a smaller phone than the S9. It's gonna be a little bit thinner as well, which is a little surprising to me. The iPhone 10 is 7.7 millimeters versus the 8.5 of the Galaxy S9, and the S9 Plus just gets a little bit thicker there. As far as materials go, the iPhone 10 is gonna be a little bit more premium here. Uh, the iPhone 10 has a stainless steel border. It has a special material in the actual paint that gives it this unique shimmer that the Galaxy does not have. But when it comes to colors and being unique, the Galaxy S9 series does have a new color, the Lilac Purple which I think is amazing and in real life shots this thing really shines I mean it's very very unique uh, the iPhone 10 is very limited here it's got silver and space gray so not much to choose from while on this one you have the titanium gray coral blue and of course the midnight black color so lots of choices there and turning to the displays the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus do have an advantage and actually a change this year the brightness honestly one of the most important things when it comes to an organic LED display the Galaxy S9 has improved this year around we don't have the exact details on the nits, but it is brighter than the S8 and S8 Plus, which were already pretty good. I think the iPhone 10 definitely could use a brighter display, but it's never been bad. I mean, I can always get the brightness I want out of it. Just do take into consideration that the S9 and S9 Plus will have a very bright organic LED displays. I'm sure it'll be the brightest on the market. Also, the resolutions, they are in a slightly different class. Although the iPhone 10 is better than the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, it still falls short of the S9 Plus, which has a QHD display. Display. The pixel density here is what matters as the S9 and S9 Plus have about 568 pixels per inch, uh, slightly less on the S9 Plus versus 459 on the iPhone 10. So the sharpness is going to be a little off. I mean, it's still good on both. The gap is bridged between the 10 and S9 more than it was in the past, but the Galaxy S9 definitely has an advantage here when it comes to the display, both in sharpness and in brightness. So the actual screen to body ratio, the amount of display in comparison to the bezel going around it is 84.36 on the Galaxy S9. Comparing that to the iPhone 10, that's gonna be 82.35. And actually it was funny, in the event Samsung took a jab at Apple and said, they don't have a notch on theirs. I mean, it's just basically going all the way around up here. I Honestly, I think that the iPhone 10 looks more futuristic. It definitely looks super unique with the wraparound display on the bottom, no bezel there. Yeah, the notch takes some getting used to, it can be a little annoying, but still, I think that the iPhone 10 personally, in my opinion, has a futuristic futuristic looking edge over the Galaxy S9. And next, a very big change coming to the Galaxy S9 for the first time ever, a dual aperture camera coming to a smartphone from Samsung. And it is actually a very monumental change, something I see that Apple definitely will do in the future. Basically, it's a aperture that will adjust to the environment you're in. And this is basically what it is. It's a lens that closes and opens, or the aperture. And uh, if you're in the dark, of course, it'll open wider and you'll get a 1.5 aperture, which is is the lowest ever on a smartphone. Just picture that for a second. You're gonna get some insane shots in the dark. That's essentially what a prime lens, a very high-end lens on a DSLR 
will do. You'll get that on your smartphone. So you're gonna get an Aperture 1.5 or 2.4 depending on your environment with this guy. It also has a DRAM chip built directly into the camera that allows you to store large amounts of files in order to get slow motion, super slow motion as Samson calls it, 960 frames per second at 720p. In comparison to the iPhone, it can do 1080p at 240 frames per second. So definitely a very big advantage to the Galaxy S9. And they really spent a long time at the event talking about this. You're gonna get some silky smooth footage. Uh, you're gonna be able to rewind it as well. It just looked so awesome. I can't wait to try that out. So super slow motion isn't something new. Sony could do that before, but first time we've ever seen it on a major smartphone from Samsung. And both of these cameras do now have dual lens cameras. So this one is stacked much like the iPhone 10. One is a wide angle, one is a telephoto, and both do the very same thing as the iPhone. You're gonna be able to get better effects like portrait mode, stuff like that on both. And in general, it's just good to have. Both are stabilized by optics, which is definitely great when you're zooming to get that stable shot. So cameras, these things are pretty similar aside from the aperture. As far as durability goes, the Galaxy S9 is keeping its IP68 water resistance, which means five feet, 30 minutes versus three feet, 30 minutes and IP67 on the iPhone 10. And Samsung put in a lot of work with the AR aspect of their smartphones using AR emojis, otherwise known as Animojis. On this guy, you'll be able to animate your own face into many different characters and emotions. So I think that was interesting, a great take on it without totally copying Apple. There'll be many different AR applications within the stock camera applications, such as translating actual text in real time from different languages. I thought that was really interesting. You'll actually be able to use a makeup feature. So you'll be able to apply certain makeup to your face and buy it directly within the app. You'll be able to scan actual food and get real-time calorie counts and add that to some sort of tracker that you're using. I thought that was one of the most brilliant applications of the AR feature coming to the Galaxy S9. And all of this is possible thanks to the insane performance you're gonna be getting out of the Snapdragon 845 chip here in America. Uh, the actual clock speed for the high-end cores 2.8 gigahertz, it's an octa-core processor, versus the hexa-core on the iPhone 10, which is 2.39 for two of those cores. The actual numbers have leaked between these in the Geekbench, and the iPhone 10 still outdoes it in terms of raw performance. But we're getting to a point where, can you utilize that power? What are you gonna use it for? Do you need it? But in the day-to-day, -day, the iPhone 10 has been pretty smooth. Can't speak for the Galaxy S9, but with that processor, I'm sure things will become much, much smoother. The Galaxy S9, using a new Intel modem, now supports gigabit LTE up to 1.2 gigabit download speeds, which doesn't mean that you're gonna get that speed. If the carrier supports it, maybe. Uh, on the iPhone 10, you're gonna get about 600 megabit download speeds. So about double the LTE speeds on the Galaxy. Also stereo speakers, which is awesome. For the first time ever on a Galaxy, you're gonna get an immersive stereo speaker experience. Now these are tuned by AKG, the same guys that tune their headphones, and you're gonna get a speaker down on the bottom and one coming out of the earpiece, much like on the iPhone. They say that this is the loudest speaker experience on the Samsung Galaxy phones, which I totally believe because before, out of that one mono speaker, it was pretty dang bad. Not only that, but Dolby Atmos is actually tuning their speakers as well, working with them to get 3D sound. So uh, Apple doesn't have this, but they say that you're gonna get a very immersive experience using that Dolby Atmos feature. Oh, and of course, the headphone jack remains on the Galaxy S9. You're gonna be able to use that convenient feature if any of you guys still have it. I personally haven't used a wired headphone connection in close to two years now, but hey, uh, if you want it, you'll definitely have that option on the Galaxy S9. And the security gap between Samsung phones and Apple phones has been bridged as you can now use Iris Plus facial scanning in order to enter your phone. And this is supposedly using the 3D modeling system, very similar to the Apple iPhone 10, maybe not as advanced, but both do now have facial scanning. And there is now even faster wireless charging according to Samsung. They didn't give exact specs, but I'm sure that the wireless charging feature will be faster than the iPhone 10 because right now on the S8 it is, and with the S9, I'm sure that will improve. So wireless fast charging, both do have it, but the Galaxy S9 is probably gonna be just a little bit better. There's also Samsung Knox, which focuses on security. And much like the Secure Enclave on the iPhone 10, it's basically an area that handles all the major security tasks of your phone, stores all the data in one area, and both phones have it. And there is now a new enterprise edition, so if you work in a company, you could possibly be using this phone in the future where they can push out faster over the air updates, have more control over the phone, stuff like that. It's not very important to me, but could be to you. And there is 
us a new Dex pad. So this is a feature that the iPhone cannot compete with at all. There's a new Dex dock where you'll be able to use the Galaxy S9 as an even more powerful computer. Uh, multiple windows, resizing them, using your phone as a trackpad. There's a lot more control given to you with the new Dex dock on the Galaxy S9. And uh, yeah, iPhone has nothing comparable to that. So if you like to use your phone as sort of a PC replacement or medium, then you definitely can with the Galaxy S9, not on the iPhone 10. Oh, and forgot to mention the RAM. So on the iPhone 10, you get three gigabytes of RAM. On the Galaxy S9, you get four. On the S9 Plus, you get six gigabytes of RAM. So that means that apps will stay loaded in the background longer, less refreshing in general. And of course, the speed test is necessary here to actually tell how far it goes. But Apple has been superb with their optimization with just three gigabytes of RAM. And I'm saying just three gigabytes. It's more than plenty. Four and six maybe just make up for the shortcomings of Android and the optimization. As far as batteries, you get a 2,716 milliamp battery on the iPhone 10 and a 3,000 on the Galaxy S9, 3,500 on the S9 Plus. So again, the same ones as the S8 and S8 Plus, but still an advantage in size over the iPhone 10. Actual usability and results will have to be tested in real life usage. Now base storage on both starts at 64 gigabytes, although on the Galaxy S9, you can upgrade it manually later with an SD card slot up to 400 gigabytes using that new crazy micro SD card. And something I thought I'd mention about the S9, again, you're gonna get a lot more software control, software features with Android 8.0 that ships straight out of the box on the Galaxy S9. There's a really cool feature that I was like, wow, why doesn't Apple do this? When you're playing video and you receive a notification, you can get a little window where you open it up in, instead of pausing your video or your content, you can actually do it straight from that little window and then resume whatever you were doing. Not to mention there is a landscape home screen now so you can switch between apps easily without having to switch your phone orientation every single time, which is something you have to do on the iPhone 10. Super annoying, but a simple software tweak could fix that in the future. There's also split screen apps and grouping them together and shortcuts. So lots of software things, tweaks. If you like that control, definitely the S9 is gonna have the advantage over the iPhone 10, which is in a locked in system, but iOS 12 is on the horizon. You know, it might expand the horizons for the iPhone 10. And let's talk price. It's funny that Samsung didn't mention this at all at the event, yet it's one of the biggest advantages that the Galaxy S9 has. So the base model Samsung Galaxy S9 in America unlocked version starts at $719. That's $5 less than last year's S8. That's ridiculous. You get all this new stuff and you pay less for it than the iPhone 10 and the last year's phone. That's kind of amazing. The Galaxy S9 Plus starts at $839.99, which is $15 more than last year's S8 Plus, but still a bargain when you compare it to the $1,000 price tag on the iPhone 10. So quite ridiculous how cheap and underpriced, not maybe not underpriced, but properly priced the Galaxy S9 is, and that'll definitely steal a lot of customers over from potential iPhone 10 buyers. These phones actually match up in so many ways now, uh, more than in the past. The organic LED displays, even though this one does have the slight advantage, uh, the cameras with the dual lens, stacked vertical cameras, there's so much similar, the stereo speakers, but at the same time, the Galaxy S9 does have some shining features, uh, which I'll put to the test in future videos, but as of now, which one should you get? Honestly, the newer phone usually tends to be slightly more advanced, but it doesn't seem the case here. I mean, the iPhone 10 still has a lot going for it, uh, such as the more advanced looking display. To me personally, uh, it's a lot faster, probably has louder speakers. Uh, the camera's still no slouch. It's still one of the best I've tested on a smartphone or the best until this guy came along. So it doesn't mean you need to discount the iPhone 10 just because the Galaxy S9 came out, but with further testing, we'll actually be able to see how they compare. Right now, I just say whichever one suits you better based on these features that I talked about in the video. I'm definitely gonna put these to the test and see how they compare in all of my usual tests. So stay tuned for that, guys. Anyways, super excited. Definitely could have used a little bit more, but for what it is, it's definitely a worthy upgrade to the S8. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Peace.